Thanks for taking the time to join me and talk about data pipelines with Nextflow on AWS. My name is Evan Floden. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Secure Labs. And we work on data analysis pipelines through Nextflow, which is an open source software, really focused at looking uh, at how we can take genomics pipelines in particular um, and run them in the cloud. So typically, if we think about a genomics pipeline, we have a series of steps and we process some data through these steps. And this is a kind of very much idealized view of what it is. Each of these uh, is a piece of software where we're kind of running um, some analysis through. And in reality, um, the, these pipelines are much more complex than this. So here's an example of a genome annotation pipeline. And here you can see that each one of those circles is a, is a script or a, um, or a it's containerized task, which is launched. And you can see that the management of these pipelines, the construction of them, becomes an extremely difficult um, part to do. So, when we were creating Nextflow way back in 2013, we stumbled across some common elements um, that were part of data analysis pipelines. If we think about um, the kind of data that we're dealing with, particularly in genomics and life sciences, um, it's increasing very uh, rapidly. We're able to split that data up and split the pipelines up and run these analysis in a distributed manner. So we can run these across cluster or into the cloud. We have a mashup of different tools. So there's many different analysis tools. That pipeline I showed you before was made up of something like 70 different scripts. Um, and therefore all the dependencies associated with that become very difficult to manage. And then there's also the differences in the resources which are required for each of those uh, uh, tools that we have. What we're trying to do from the user perspective though is really make these analyses reproducible so that we can get the same result across different infrastructure, different environments. We can make them portable so that they can be shared with collaborators and enable hybrid deployment. We can think about these things being scalable. They can be developed on your laptop, run with small test data sets and then scaled up into the cloud. We want these things to be validated so there's some kind of conformance associated with particular execution with a particular pipeline and usable, not just by the developers of the pipeline, but from lab technicians all the way through to systems engineers who want to integrate these into wider platforms. It all comes down to really automation, taking the best software engineering practices that exist and allowing bioinformaticians and developers um, to use these. The principles of Nextflow are that you write code in any language, you can take existing pipelines in R or bash scripts or anything in Python, you define these code blocks that we call processes and then you link them together with data flow programming. The dependencies are then defined, typically using Docker, Singularity and, or Conda, and then the whole script itself is version controlled. So Nextflow is both a programming language, it's a DSL built on top of Groovy, and it's also a runtime. And from this, you're able to execute on all of the traditional batch schedulers, as well as Kubernetes and of course, first class support for AWS Batch. The way that this works is Nextflow is a, a DSL, so it's written on top of Groovy. This allows us to quickly develop our pipelines, but then for the corner cases, we have an underlying programming language which we're able to access. The data flow programming model gives us this implicit parallelization. This is able to scale to tens of thousands of tasks. Each of these tasks is a self-contained unit. You can think of it as a containerized job, and this allows us to distribute the compute um, very effectively. And finally, a key principle of Nextflow is that we're separating out the logic of the deployment, so where this is analyzed versus the workflow logic. And by keeping these two things separate, we're able to get all the benefits that come with portable deployments. Considering a basic example, this is a command line tool here, so this is a typical a uh, single task that a bioinformatician would run. They're defining the inputs here. So they have a reference, they have a sample that they're going to align against it and they're piping to another tool. We want to keep the same fluidity that's available to people using Unix tools and you simply wrap in the, the uh, process that we have here. So we take BWAMEM and you notice that we can now use the output of the first process, in this case, the BAM channel becomes the input of the index sample channel. And it's a implicit linking um, of the processes together, which provide us with this data flow approach. So this data flow um, programming model, you can think of it as that each of these tasks or processes is sitting there waiting, it's kind of alive. And as soon as a, uh, an element comes from the into the input channel, it triggers off an execution. So these channels are asynchronous first in first out queues. 
And it's the links between these processes with the channels, which is really defining the, the execution. The actual execution of Nextflow workflows, so now not on so much on the, the language itself, but on how these things are executed. You can run Nextflow locally with or without containers. You can have a centralized orchestration model. This is where Nextflow is submitting jobs to a cluster. So each task is submitting this. This can be traditional batch schedulers, for example, Slurm, Univer Grid Engine, LSF, etc. And here Nextflow uses a shared file system for the individual tasks to talk to each other. What's become by far the most popular way of running Nextflow though is with AWS Batch. With AWS Batch, each individual task is submitted to Batch via the API, and then Batch spins up the resources that are required for each of those individual tasks. In the first versions of this, Nextflow uses an S3 bucket so that the input data is transferred to the virtual machine, back to the S3 bucket, and then again. But recent support with uh, Amazon FSx for Lustre enables users to have a mounted shared file system, and this reduces time and speeds up the execution. Finally, I'd just like to switch over to a quick demo now and discuss a little bit about Nextflow Tower, which is for the management of Nextflow pipelines. So this is Nextflow Tower. It's a web application that's installable um, on-premise or an AWS cloud, typically through uh, EKS or ECS. Nextflow Tower allows you to manage your Nextflow executions, so you get a full history of what's been run. You can see the resources that's been launched, the aggregate statistics here, information, and you can jump into each individual task to be able to access um, the information in each single one. So each one of these is a job which is submitted to batch, and we can go in and see the command line, get the execution log, and quickly trigger. We have automation, so we can launch pipelines all Nextflow workflows are Git repositories. So I can simply select the repository here and choose where I want to run this. In this case, I'm running in batch with this environment that I've set up. Choose a, uh, an S3 bucket for a working and launch the pipeline. We also have support for credential management, where you can manage the credentials, as well as pipeline actions, which is a way of automating these pipelines. So that was a quick short demo on Nextflow Tower. You can find the service of tower.nf um, to try out this if you want to try it with your Nextflow pipelines. Thanks a lot for the time. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, please feel free to check out, check out Nextflow or secura.io.